Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Public Opinion Show with your host, Pam Morton. This is a whole brand new season for me. I am in a new space. I'm so excited. And look, 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 look who I have. I have <laughs> Vanetta with me. Vanetta is my very special guest for this segment of the show. And Vanetta, thank you so much for coming back to see me. You are awful welcome. I made it point of being here today. Oh, I'm to so kick I'm so off. excited. And thank you so much. Yes, I appreciate yes. that. Vanetta yes. and I are going to resume doing our tea times probably maybe next, maybe not next week, but maybe in a, another couple of weeks. But I wanted Vanetta to come on here, uh, especially this uh, show, because when I first asked you to be my guest host, it was during the election season right. when Biden and Harris were elected. And we Together, we were watching the inauguration and we were talking and, you know, everybody had something to say it was about so everything. Exciting. I had yes. on my pink with my chucks and, and everything. You did. And so I said, I wanted you to come back because this show that I'm doing today is about the election cycle. And I wanted to talk about, you know, the importance of voting, right. voting down the ballot, all of that. And I think it's just so important. And I wanted to make sure that I had a show. Uh, and in fact, I'm doing two shows about uh, the election. You're going to be on my next show. Um for, and okay. stay a longer period of time. But okay. um, this show, yes, I'm going to uh, really dig into the importance of voting. Yeah. Well, you know you what? Know. Don't you think it's important that from four years ago, now we're grandmothers, and I'm thinking about my grandchild. Oh, and it's, uh, it's so much. It's so much more you know, than though. Exactly. Just it just seems today. like there's so much more at stake. Like Very much for higher. our girls. Very you know, much for our girls. Very much so. And, and yes, I uh, since we started... Uh, at that, I, I have a grandson and a granddaughter, and you were expecting your first in thirty six days. In thirty six days, so that <laughs> so we want to be able to leave our our world, our our country, in a better place for Definitely. our grandchildren. And sometimes it just feels like we're not going in that direction. But um, it's important, though. Our our, our voices have meaning. We our, must our votes have be, meaning, and you know, yeah, and so. I, all young people, I inquire, are you voting? Are you voting? Mm -hmm. I actually have not run into anyone who would have the nerve to say no. Yeah. But the thought that you would not take this election, it is so critical, it's so, so important. It's so critical. It's so Seriously, critical. You would not be welcome in my home if you told me you didn't vote. <laughs> it's same with me. So at any rate, we're going to get started. I'm going to welcome you back for the next show. But I just wanted to say thank you so much. Thank you I for really having me back. I missed you all. All right. So let's get started and meet our guests. First, we have Kayla Griffin Green. Kayla advocates for voter rights and election protection as the Ohio State Director for All Voting is Local. She leads statewide voter administration in this role, as well as serving as the president of the Cleveland NAACP. Kayla holds a Juris Doctorate and a Master of Public Administration from Cleveland State University and a Bachelor's Degree from Kent State University. Next, we have Renee Richard. Renee is the President and CEO of Corporate College. She is also the Senior Advisor and Counsel to the President of Cuyahoga Community College. So let's get started and welcome our guests. Welcome. Thank you all so very much. And thank you, Renee, for allowing me to come into this beautiful space. I love it. I really, really love it. And thank you for staying on me because I said, well, you know, I don't know. You know, I, I was, you know, weighing things. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to give this a try. And I feel like I'm at home. I'm going to tell are. you, I feel like I'm sitting in a little in a living room or my family room. And that's what I want to have. I want to have a conversation that feels like that. So it wouldn't be the public opinion show if we did not have a public opinion question of the week. So let's see what that question is. How will this year's general election affect us from the national, state, and local levels of government? So I'm going to give both of you just like two minutes to answer that question, and then we're just going to have a whole group discussion about it. So Kayla, I'm going to let you go first. Go ahead. Yeah, so a lot of that is in the name of the organization that I work for, All Voting is Local. We often talk about how elections come around every four years, but elections are every year. Mm -hmm. And we don't tend to flex our muscle unless we are people stay on us. So we have really 
critical elections here in Ohio, particularly that are down the ballot. We have, of course, the president's race, the U.S. Senate race, but we also have three open um, Supreme Court races here in the state of Ohio. We have a rather critical statewide issue ballot that is on um, from citizens, not politicians. Mm -hmm. We also have taxes that are coming up with the arts and the school. Mm -hmm. So literally at every level, we have either lawmakers or issues that are impacting our everyday lives. And more critical than our president, it is what is happening with our schools, what's happening with the arts, what's mm -hmm. happening with the judiciary, not just on the Supreme Court, but on the local and uh, county level as well. Oh, I love that answer. Very good. Now, Renee, I'm going to give you opportunity to answer as well. Go ahead. Well, thanks for having me on your show. Thank thanks you. for coming to Corporate College. So welcome to your new podcast home. Um, I, like Kayla, uh, this election affects every level of government. It, it affects every citizen. There are laws that are created at every level of government, federal, state, and local. And the folks who make the laws are the folks that we elect Mm -hmm. or the folks that don't get elected are also affecting mm -hmm. us, right? So it's very critical for folks to participate because we are going to live by the laws that are made mm -hmm. by the folks that we elect. So everyone's affected. Every level of government is affected. And a lot of folks, as Kayla just mentioned, tend to think about, oh, yes, a presidential mm -hmm. election, I'm going to vote for president. But when you... Um, go down to your local courts mm -hmm. and your the prosecutor was elected locally mm. at the county level you know if you go into city court that that person could have been in some states elected locally ours is hired and appointed but you know it's just very local whether it's domestic court they're elected you know, so folks tend to say it doesn't matter mm -hmm. in my life, but it right. matters very much at every level of your life. Wherever the law is made, you're being affected by it. That's right. And so I'm so glad that both of you said that because I, you know, I'm, I stay on Facebook a lot and Instagram and I see so much talk about, you know, the presidential election and people are so heated about that. But I think people, what they really need to understand is the importance, especially like of Congress, the people who are in Congress who make laws. And it surprises me how little people really know about civics. You know, it's like yeah. people think that the president is supposed to do everything, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, Kayla, you want to speak to that on just like the importance of just educating really people about the whole process. Yeah, uh, to your point, people don't understand civics. And I think a lot of folks in the younger generation, um, we are missing that because it's not taught in schools. Mm -hmm. We have to get back to having an educated voter blog. And that really does start in mm -hmm. the schools, sometimes in the homes, but we have to realize even where we're situated in Cuyahoga County, Cleveland specifically, the adult literacy rate is rather low. So we have a high amount of people mm. who are adults and cannot read. So we yeah. cannot expect just uh, this information to be shared in the homes mm -hmm. when uh, it has been removed from the schools. But to your point, people really need to understand who are making what laws. Mm -hmm. So I spoke with someone today. He is 40 years old and he's never voted before. Mm -hmm. And we were having a conversation about some of the issues that he is seeing on the east side of Cleveland where he lives and works. And I said, do you know who makes those decisions for you? And he immediately pointed to the mayor. And I'm like, that's <laughs> not... Right. Who makes that decision for you? Are you talking to your county person, your county executive? Mm -hmm. Are you talking to your county council person, your city council person? I said, so what you are missing is an understanding of how to organize and how to move collective power. But you also have to vote in order to do that. Right. Because do you know what happens if you call an elected official and I said, do you know the first thing that happens? He said, no. I said, they or their staff person looks up your voter record to, right, see, to see if you're a voter. Yes. So you have to be engaged in this process and you have to be strategic and know who is pulling the levers. We need to know not they did that. They aren't giving me mm -hmm. money. They are coming against me. Who is the they? We have to be able to name it because we need to know what function they operate right. in. I think a lot of it probably comes from a lot of misinformation that 
is in the media as well. And also that comes from elected officials. I think a lot of them don't really understand <laughs> on the positions that they are in. And so, Renee, what do you um, think about uh, that? about educating people and the importance of people just understanding even issues. A lot of times you go to the ballot and there'll be like issues, something you're like, I don't know, I'm just going to wing this and get, you know, so that's important as well. Don't you think? I mean, it's paramount that we understand Mm -hmm. and it's paramount that we be involved and that the education is ongoing and that it doesn't just happen once every four years because all kinds of, School board right. elections, all kinds of local elections take place in between the presidential elections. And you know, people don't understand. Mm-hmm. And I think we've done a great injustice to the younger generations by taking civics out of the school, mm. taking government out of the school. They have no idea. People don't understand the Electoral College. Right. They have no idea until just recently when the mm-hmm. Electoral College didn't mimic the popular mm-hmm. vote. People had no idea what the Electoral mm-hmm. College stood for, how, right. how it I think decisive. they need to get rid of it personally, but that's just me. That's what we vote. Yeah. But yeah. no, but you're right. People don't. People feel like, OK, we'll just count all of them, all the, uh, the you know, the votes and whoever has the most is the winner. But yeah. it's, it's, you know, a little bit more complicated. Yeah. And usually when that. they mimic each other, and most of the time they do, other than yeah. in recent times, maybe two elections, they've mimicked each other. So not a problem. But now it's right. become a problem and we do have to address exactly. that. But I think I wanted to just follow up on one thing that you said, kind of knowing where things come from, knowing who mm-hmm. the lawmakers are and what decisions mm-hmm. they're making. And um, the, the, the welfare of our citizens, the social services in the state of Ohio, a lot of that comes from the state. Mm-hmm. It's supplemented by the county, mm-hmm. but the vast amount of social yeah. services when people are unemployed, the unemployment mm-hmm. comes from the state. Mm-hmm. When people need to have food vouchers or food, uh, food stamps or food carts, it comes from the state. And when, when our folks don't understand that and they don't vote mm-hmm. down ballot and they have a lot of folks... Are, are confused and they think we only have senators and Congress and uh, in, in, at the federal the level. Federal they level. don't realize we have representatives at both the state representatives for the Senate um, and the state, yeah. you know, right here. And so, you know, we have to continue mm-hmm. to educate you round. And, and really so, Kayla, what are you what are um, you doing specifically with the board, you know, with what you do to educate people and to get people to come out to vote? Yeah, so there's this misnomer often in my employee job that we do grassroots work. Mm -hmm. And our work is really at the grass tops level. So I am an advocate. (laughs) Like this. Yes. (laughs) We are talking to the decision makers. Okay. And we work closely with people who work on the ground level Mm -hmm. to galvanize people. So, for instance, at the top of this week, um, I was able to release a report that we've been working on all year round, and it was election officials' voices. We interviewed 29 election officials from across the state. It is folks from larger counties, smaller counties, rural counties, um, counties that have 3,000 people and counties that have 900,000 people who are registered to vote. Mm -hmm. We got a very diverse group of voices to hear what they are saying. We will be able to use that and take it to the state house and advocate to our Senate and House of Representatives who are making the laws on elections here in the state of Ohio. Mm. We'll be able to talk to press and media and highlight some of the issues that we are seeing in our elections. And it's really not for the everyday people because the report is like 50 pages and it's long and it's wordy and it has recommendations (laughs) and it has stats in it. But we can go to our lawmakers and say, hey, enough is enough. Stop making laws that go against our election administration, that our administrators are not able to carry out, that causes more burden Mm -hmm. on the system. And push through good policies. Now, in my volunteer role, and all voting is uh, when I'm done with all voting is local, and I go over to NAACP, we've hired canvassers and we got people door knocking. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're right over at Cleveland Votes with our partners doing phone banking right now. We're doing text banking. So we are engaging with people and getting the word out, get out to vote. Mm -hmm. We did voter registration, Um, really trying to make sure that people are excited about the elections too. So I'll do a little plug. 
On November 3rd, we have an early voting pull up to the polls where we'll, we will be at Agora Theater and what will be a party and musical entertainment and all yeah, of that. And we'll have trolleys for people to come yeah. down. Mm -hmm. And then the Sunday after, we'll have souls to the polls and we'll have um, people to uh, divine nine wearing their letters mm -hmm. and we'll have folks coming from church and we'll have food trucks out there so that people can walk over to vote. So we are really engaging on all levels to make sure that our elected officials, mm -hmm. the one on the state level, are making good policies for us and and that the people on the ground are made able to access the ballot. Wonderful. You know what? I um, on Instagram today, Taraji Henson had posted a, a thing about um, understanding or having a voting plan. And uh, one of it was like, uh, know when early voting starts. And it, I know it started in most states uh, already uh, knowing uh making sure you have your ID or if you have to have, because some states don't, you don't have to have an ID, some you do, but making sure that you understand what you need to have. So you want to just, both of you just go into um, voting plans and, and, and the importance of that. Yes, yeah, so I would say here locally, um, you should try to vote early. Mm -hmm. Early voting has already begun. You do have to have an ID. Um, you have to have patience in Cuyahoga County. Unfortunately, we only have one place you can go to vote. So you have to go down to the Board of Elections. So be prepared. Same with me in Summit County. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just have to be prepared to wait in line. Mm -hmm. It took me about an hour. I went early. Mm -hmm. um, so um, there are a lot of forces that are trying to make it more difficult. So you, if you're going to uh, vote by absentee ballot, you have to take your own ballot down with the new laws that were passed, or if a family member takes, a family member mm -hmm. can take it, and then they have to sign an attestation that they're part of your family. So you have to be prepared for that. If mm -hmm. someone is, if you're dropping off grandma's ballot, um, or your mm -hmm. brother, or you're somebody who's out of town. Um, so you, so that has to be part of your plan. Um, in past elections, we could take people from church, we could gather their their mm. absentee ballots and we could drop them off. But now you now can't, you can't do, do that. that. So you have to already know that you can't do that um, this year. So that has to be part of your plan. And if you're going to vote on election day, you just have to be prepared to go to stand in line, to have your ID, check, make sure you're at the right place. Um, if sure you've you're moved, right. mm -hmm. check with the Board of Elections and make yeah. sure that they have your right address or that you go yeah. to the right precinct. Because um, I did that. I went online to make sure that everything was, oh, oh, you know, I was still on the, because yeah, I was like, oh, well, let me go. Because they had been saying so make sure that you haven't yeah. been erased. From, and I'm like, I vote all the time. But yeah. I, it just spooked me. So I said, okay, I'm, and I was able, I'm, you know, my name was on there. I think I'm going to wait until election day only because, um, like you said, I, I would have to go far down, like away from where I live. Mm -hmm. And I just don't have the time to do it. Um, so I'm hoping that there won't be too long of a line. But then again, I kind of hope there will be long lines. Yeah. So no, but, we don't you know. want long lines. Yeah. We don't want long lines because it deters people. Really? And yeah, because people often don't make a voter plan. And mm. so they come on their lunch break or they come right oh, before work. Oh, and then they're like, oh, I got to go. And they're tired and then they got to, yes, mm -hmm. they got to go. So we don't want long lines. We do want the excitement, right? And I think the other thing, like Renee laid it out perfectly of like why the voter plan mm -hmm. is important. But let me just highlight that we only have one early voting location in each county, it's not just in Summit or North uh, or Cuyahoga. It's in all of, the it's in all yeah. of Ohio okay. counties, and that really is restrictive mm -hmm. for Ohio voters. Most other states, if you look to our neighbors to the north in Michigan, they have all of these different mm -hmm. early votes. I think you can vote at the library, any wow. of your county libraries. You can early vote. It makes it readily accessible, and for us, it's very restrictive, yeah, and that's I intentional. Why. Really? No, it's intentional oh, so yeah. that we can prevent so many people from, from flooding early. Wow. early voting. And then it puts pressure on our election day voting. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember the people who are working the polls on election day, they are your neighbors. They're yeah. the people that you go to church with or, you know, teachers that may have the day off. Mm -hmm. And so they are not steeped in election administration 365 <laughs> right. days of the year. Right. They go through a training right before mm -hmm. and then they are let out and they, not let out, but they are mm -hmm. assigned yeah. to their polling locations. So in addition to everything that was mentioned, I would also mention that in Ohio, we have no excuse absentee ballot and you can still request your ballot to be sent to your home and you can vote from the comfort of your home. Mm. You can either drop it off at the drop box or you can put it in the mail as well. 
So you don't have to wait and stand in line, but you have kind of the flexibility of voting in Mm -hmm. the comfort. So I would just add that to a point. But I do think it's important that you both highlight it. Oh, there's only one. It's pretty Mm -hmm. far from your home. Mm -hmm. But that is intentional because Ohio has become so restrictive with mm. our election administration process. And, and that's why yeah. issue one is so important. I was just going to say, and that's what the that's, gerrymandering. That's the gerrymandering. Yes. And we absolutely mm-hmm. have to address gerrymandering in Ohio because mm-hmm. boundaries have been drawn in mm-hmm. such irrational manners that someone like you may be in Summit County mm-hmm. and, so, and, the, and another person in your same district might be 45 right. miles away in a narrow strip mm-hmm. of land because that's the way the boundaries and you have totally different interests mm-hmm. than that person that lives 45 right, miles away exactly. from you. So it's, um, it, again, why does it matter for us to vote for state officials? Because the state officials mm-hmm. have decided we only need one mm. place to early vote. Mm-hmm. A different set mm-hmm. of state officials may very well right. decide that and there should be several that needs to in be each discussed. county. How can that be changed? Like, what would need to happen in order for there to be more locations to do early voting? We have to get the legislature to change it. Mm-hmm. it it's simple as that. They they just codify uh, one drop box in the top mm. at the beginning of 2023. We can ask, they can change the law. It, it's not that hard. Mm-hmm. They need to just, we need people who are responsible and have common sense practices. Mm-hmm. And I think to Renee's point, gerrymandering has allowed for the most extreme politicians to run on extreme practices and they're not primaried. Mm-hmm. And so when we have fairer maps that allow for more reasonable minded, mm-hmm. middle of the road right. folks to come in and get into the election, we'll have better policies as well. I'd just like to add that two weeks ago, I spoke with a group of elementary school students and their mm-hmm. parents, a part of Jack and Jill. And one of the mothers asked, can you explain gerrymandering? I said, to you or to your eight year old? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> And so the eight year old was like curious. I said, let me pull up the map. Right. So I pulled up the map because I figured that would be easier than Mm -hmm. trying to explain it. And this young girl said, why are there so many zigs and zags? I said, that is the precise question Mm -hmm. we have been asking our politicians. I said, I'm going to use that until election day. I said, what would you do different? She said, I would draw within the lines. I'm like, please, let's come down to Columbus and tell somebody (laughs) else. Please understand it much better. So that is why this is super important Mm -hmm. that an eight-year-old can look at our maps and say, this is clearly wrong. It's Mm -hmm. clearly outside of the bounds. Mm -hmm. And if we were to draw within the lines Mm -hmm. and make um, people live within districts that have their same interests, we would have a lot more moderate policies in the state of mm-hmm. Ohio than the extreme policies that we see. Very good. And it would match the electorate Absolutely. more evenly. Right. We don't, yes. the, the population in the state of Ohio is not extreme. Mm-hmm. We are actually a pretty moderated mm-hmm. state. and yeah. our But our policies and our lawmakers right now do not match the electorate. Right. Now, Kayla, are there any like um, dates or specific uh, dates that people should keep in mind, like when it, when is it too late to do uh, mail in ballots or you know early voting or whatever? Early voting goes all the way up to the day, the, the, the Sunday the day, before. The Sunday before. Okay. So in that same policy that codified only one drop box, we got rid of Monday early voting. Mm-hmm. So the last day to early vote is November the third. Third. Yeah. Sunday, November the 3rd, we have two weekends of early voting. So not this weekend, but next weekend we start early voting. So you'll have Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And then the following weekend, the last weekend before Election Day, which Election Day is on November 5th, Mm -hmm. we'll have November 2nd and 3rd to vote. If you're going to vote by mail, you have to have your ballot application returned by October 29th. And I would say even earlier than that, but that is the deadline because the mail is slow. So Mm -hmm. we want people to get that in immediately. If for some reason you are not able to vote or you're not able to show up, you you're hospitalized, something happens. Mm -hmm. You there are at every nurse's stations in the hospital, you can ask for a form to fill out and the board will come. Yeah, they'll come out and vote 
you. They'll send two people oh, out, really? a Republican and a Democrat, mm-hmm. to vote you. Huh. So there are options for folks wow. to vote. But October 29th is the last day. We do not urge people. Don't <laughs> wait that long because the post office and it's, oh, it's yeah. slow. So you need to get out there. And then on Election Day, the ballots open at 6.30 a.m. and they close at 7.30 p.m. If you are in line to vote at 7.30 and there happens to be a long line, Mm -hmm. do not get out of line. Stay in line. Stay in line. So they have to allow you to, even if it's past 7.30. If it's past 7.30 and you're already in line, you have the right to vote. Now, they will send somebody out if there's still a line and they'll cut off the line so no one can get Mm -hmm. in the line afterwards. But you have to stay in line to vote early. Mm -hmm. I mean, to vote Mm -hmm. on Election Mm -hmm. Day. Um, those are the critical things that we are seeing. And I would even say um, it's important for folks to understand the hours because they change from week to week. So mm-hmm. I don't have it in front. And that's another policy issue that happens down in Columbus mm. that we often don't have control over that our local officials just a mess. would like to have more. <laughs> yeah. See, say and and think, think about in this day and time. When things should be getting easier, when right. we should be making things easier for folks, it's, our yes. legislators are making, making things more difficult. Right. They are taking away more more mm-hmm. opportunities. We used to have lots of opportunities for early voting. Mm-hmm. We used to be able to uh, register and then vote on the same day Golden within, oh, within yeah, a week. Oh, yeah, I remember that. They took that away. Yeah. And, and the things that are being taken away are being taken away by the legislatures that are in position because the results are being against their mm-hmm. best, their interest. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we need to think about what's being done to uh, the, the masses by the legislatures mm-hmm. that we have here in, in Ohio. And when folks think about is it important for me to go vote? These are the kind of things that you have to think about. How long are you going to sit on the sidelines and allow rights that you have Mm -hmm. earned for yourself, rights that have been, folks have died for, for you to get? How long are you going to sit on the sideline and let those rights be taken away before you get involved? And that's why I just think it's so critically important. And every time I vote, I always think about people who came before me and my answers and all of the things that they went through so that I can have this opportunity and this this right to cast my vote. And so I always just feel this sense of pride when mm-hmm. I go. And I just think that the young people now are, just don't have that same pride of, of voting. I just think it's it's just a wonderful way of me to be able to express myself. And so when I hear people who are just like one issue voters, or they may say, well, I don't want to vote for them because I don't like that. But a lot of times people have to understand you cannot vote in a sense where you're you're just being selfish. You have to vote to me uh, and think about how it's going to affect everybody. Yeah, and, and I don't you know, want to put our young people all in one basket state. like that yes. because there are a bunch that are not energized or not oh, yeah. prideful, and then but there are a huge are, yeah, who are really on it. that mm-hmm. are very prideful and very much involved and understand the sacrifices and, mm-hmm. are, and, and want to be involved and want to help move the country right. forward um, and make it better for right. everyone. So. so I have I've really enjoyed this conversation. Um, is there anything else that you all want to say by way of closing? Um, One thing that I do want to say for for those of us here in Ohio, um, issue when we've been talking about issue one and lots of lots have happened to make issue one difficult. Mm -hmm. The ballots are difficult. So when you go vote, Mm. look, issue one goes one full page and then three quarters of another page. Wow. And you have to. Turn your ballot over, go all the way to the the bottom, bottom. past the Spanish language, (laughs) and then there's the box for yes and no to vote. Oh, wow. So you have to go all the way to the next page. Don't get frustrated. Just turn your ballot over or turn to the next page. Go all the way to the bottom, past the Spanish language, and then you'll see yes. And that's where you should. Okay. I'm going to add one more to that because the language is so long and it's so cumbersome Mm. that if you are in a county that is voting on voting machines and you don't have the paper, Mm -hmm. we've had reports that you have to click more up Mm. to eight times in order to get to to the the point where you actually vote. vote. Yes, if you're voting on a screen, in some counties you have to click more, eight 
time oh my goodness. to get to the end of the language. And so you cannot be frustrated. You have to be you patient have to just, with it. Just be patient. Do not hit skip because <laughs> it will skip you to the next ballot question mm. as opposed to skipping you to the end. Wow. So I've been telling people that literally since day one of early voting, those are the reports that we're getting in. And again, that is purposeful. Mm -hmm. The language that was presented by the campaign was five bullet points. It would have been very simple for someone to read it and understand it. Right. The language that is on the current ballot was put on by the ballot board mm. that if it was printed, it was three pages wow. long. That's that's crazy. So we have to understand that this is by design and we have to take our time and vote the whole ballot. All right. Thank you all so very much. This has been such important information that you have shared. I just want to encourage everyone, get out there and vote. And thank you all so very much. Thank you for having me. Oh, Vanetta, were you listening to that? That was extremely educational. And the things about gerrymandering and about literacy so important, mm -hmm. I thought. But in the terminology that we use, it was very unfamiliar with some people I was speaking with, the term gerrymandering. Mm -hmm. That doesn't say that we are segregating you by yeah. your zip code. Yeah, or, or drawing maps so that it can be beneficial to other people. And so it's important to educate. That's the thing For I got sure. out of all of this. It's important to educate, important to have a voting plan. In Definitely. Important to make sure that your name is still, uh, you know, we should have done that already by right. now. But making sure that you know where you need to go vote, the important dates, and just getting out there. To be a motivated voter. Yes. Whatever it takes, I'm yes. going to vote. That's right. I, that's absolutely correct. So if you enjoy watching this show, continue to follow me on Facebook as well as on YouTube. And if you cannot watch the show, listen on the go wherever you get your podcasts. So I'll see you next time for another episode of the Public Opinion Show. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>